everybody was like, okay, I'm in the middle of, you literally, Antipati is like a forest, semi-forest, okay? And um, really as a sister, you know, in my mind, I had this concept, okay, I'm going to be preaching, I'm going to be doing this. And, but getting there, it was, no, that was not even what we were doing. Literally every day, we, from the moment we wake up, from the moment we start the day and um, right from that itself, there's a faithfulness that God expects of us. And this is not just as a person who is studying to become a sister, who's, who's praying, preparing myself, but even as a person, like any, any person who is taking any spiritual steps, there is faithfulness in each moment. And until and unless we are faithful from the first moment onwards, it is impossible to go forward, right? We know this thing, grace builds on grace. So, you know, first thing in the morning itself, you know, we get a training. Like, how do we wake up? It's not funny. The first time around, right? Waking up was the hardest thing for me because I, I sleep for like eight, five, eight, eight to nine hours a day. And that is, that's, the, that's something I'm used to. But going there, it's not that we sleep less. We sleep a healthy amount. We sleep six hours because we are growing children. And if we're extra tired, you know, we sleep very well in the sense that as we should. But there's a training in the sense that it's so easy when we hear the alarm ring or when someone calls us, it's so easy to stay in for one more second. But our training is that right then and there, we should jump up. Literally, we jump up and we start the day. And right, are we able to be faithful in that moment? From the first moment of the day, are we able to be faithful? And then we sing, welcome Holy Spirit, right in the morning when we wake up to welcome the Holy Spirit into our day, into our life. And how do we sing that welcome Holy Spirit? Because no one is seeing that moment. No one is seeing that time. No one is seeing, uh, am I singing loudly? Am I singing lively? If I'm singing at all, no one's seeing it. But am I faithful to that moment? And if I'm faithful to that, then that's when I'm truly able to save souls. So my concept of the salvation of souls itself has changed. Otherwise, in my mind, I was always thinking, I need to preach, I need to do this, I need to do so much works, I need to do, you know, I need to get active, and I need to do so many things. Uh, but rather, no, in order to really save the people of God, God wanted me to do something, and that lies within the word of God. And that's what it says, he gave his life to save his people. So I must give my life in order to save the people of God. So if you want to do something for Jesus, there is nothing more that you should do except you should give of yourselves, give of yourself to the very end. And it's not easy in the sense that it's not the big things that we do, rather faithfulness in the small things. Are you able to you know, take a commitment in your prayer life and stick to it. And of course, there will be times where we fall, but are you trying your maximum? And you know, the beauty of it is he, God sees how painful it is for you. Sometimes when I was, you know, like being away from my family, being away from home, for me, the United States is home and going to India itself was like entering a whole different world, okay? Entering a whole different world. So going there, I used to think, God, are you, are you seeing how much painful it is for me at times? Because, you know, I want to be home. I rather, you know, it's so different for me. Are you seeing this? And, you know, but when I sit down and I'm with the Lord, I see that, you know, everything that I do from my heart and if it's for Jesus, he blesses it abundantly. See, right, like when I was in formation in the first year, uh, there I could not see the fruit of what I did. But rather, we won't see the fruit of it now, but only later will we see the fruit. But are we faithful to those moments? And see, if we, however much pain we take, with that much pain, we are able to save souls. See, so that's what he said. And what else does it say? If we continue reading, it says like this. And to win for himself an everlasting name. So first of all, we have to completely surrender of ourselves. And only until we surrender, only then can the salvation of souls happen. So maybe if you're a mother, God expects you to surrender yourself to your duties. Maybe if you are a minister, whatever God has entrusted to you, big or small. So whatever it may be, if it even is the smallest of things, be faithful in that. And through that, you will save souls, not by the big things. You know, like when we read, when I used to read St. Faustina Diary, she would save many souls just by her little things. And she one day, you know, in her diary, it was very, it, for me, it was very striking. 
you know, she was doing some stitching work. And as she's doing the stitching work, she's telling Jesus, you know, she's like trying to like, you know, she's telling you, she's like, I, I want, I want thousands of souls through this work. And she's like, and Jesus is telling her, no, 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 no. This is too simple. This is yours doing something so simple. And she goes, but I'm doing this with my whole heart. I'm doing this with you. So imagine that Faustina is doing the same thing all the other sisters are doing. All the other sisters are stitching, but they are not saving souls. But she, but what is she doing? She is stitching and she, she is saying, Lord, I'm offering this for souls. Give me those souls. And with love, I'm doing this. And through that single act, she was able to save that many souls. So see, even in our schoolwork, even in our daily life, we do, we, we have to do those things. There's no exceptions, but are we doing it with our heart? Are we doing it with love? Are we doing it with Jesus? Now imagine this, our Amma always tells us, even the prayers that we are doing. So we, many times we pray so many prayers, but how are we praying those prayers? Are we thinking about, when we say the rosary, are we really thinking about Mother Mary? When we say the Divine Mercy Chaplet, are we asking for the grace? Because uh, until and unless we ask for the grace, like that prayer is just a prayer. We're just mouthing a whole bunch of words. Is our hearts joined with the crucified Lord in those moments? And when it is, is when the salvation of souls happen. Because at that moment, what happens when we are praying? We're not thinking, we're not doing anything else, but we're just surrendering ourselves. So in this day, God is asking us faithfulness in the smallest moments. God is asking us, are you able to join me with your heart? So maybe you are not doing big, big things, but the small things right now is preparing you for big things. See, in Artipati, you know, one of the biggest things that I've learned is many of the sisters now who are doing very fiery ministries, those who are going out doing the gift of preaching, those who have strong prophecy messages, really what were their jobs in the beginning? Many of them, their jobs were just to sit and pray. Others, they were just to sit and be in the kitchen, maybe be doing kitchen duties. But no one is seeing whether, so maybe they're in the kitchen. No one is seeing if they're saying the rosary. No one is seeing if they're doing their Bible reading. Because we have, every day we read the Bible for 45 minutes. And no one is seeing if they're doing that. But they're being faithful to their God. They don't have to give an account to anybody. But they are giving an account to God. And through that small faithfulness, what are they doing? They're surrendering themselves because they know they rather take so much of time. For example, where maybe if they have kitchen duty, they can take one hour to cook something. But rather than taking that one hour, what do they do? They do it as fast as they can so they can spend the rest of their time with Jesus. And see, God is seeing that they're taking so much of a pain. God is seeing that and God, what does God do? God is ready to entrust souls to them. See, Jesus is confident enough to give souls to them because he knows that they are not lazy. They are not living for themselves. So let us look to ourselves and see who are we living for? And this is something that I had to ask myself many times. Who am I living for? There was one point I used to live for myself in a sense that it's so easy. In my meaning, even when we do ministry, there's a point where we can do it for ourselves, for our pleasure in the sense that we, for our own gain or for others, what will others think of me? I must do it for others. But am I doing it really for Jesus? Even if no one sees, I will be faithful to the team prayers. Even if no one sees me, I will be faithful to do my personal prayer. Even if no one sees me, I will be faithful to do my Bible reading. And thus what happens? God becomes confident. Jesus becomes confident enough to entrust you with souls. Only and until we take those small faithful steps, only then can we grow in ministry. When we, lead, we, we really, in, in, even in the lives of saints, and even in the lives of, you know, like what else, and and we see that they were faithful from the beginning. Nobody was watching them. Yet in the silence of their heart, in their hearts, they were faithful to God. So, you know, first is, we should be, you know, surrender ourselves as well as, uh, you know, the last thing in there, it says, what does it say? To win for himself an everlasting name. So not for the glory on this earth, 
not for any reward on this earth, but rather if we are, if our heart's only desire is Jesus and until our aim is Jesus, only then can we do everything for him. And it's not easy to get to that state, but little by little by little, he will help us because he desires us to grow to him. So let us, you know, cling to him and desire that same growth within us. So I just really want to encourage you Yes, God is calling you to a surrender in the sense that you don't have to, you know, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever you are entrusted with, be faithful in that. And through that, Jesus will give you souls. And why should you do this? For an everlasting name so that you can join in him with heaven, you know, to be in heaven, to be with Jesus. Can you imagine when you are doing something and no one appreciates you and when you are doing something and no one understands how much painful it is for you for example maybe maybe you are in a group or maybe you are in, in, in some some situations where you want to speak up or you want to say something that maybe you know you really it's you have to bite your tongue right but you choose to really hold it in that's very painful for you but for others, others might see, why is she struggling so much? But for you, it's very painful. But the Lord sees that. And when he sees that, you know, you know, what should push you forward is that, you know, Jesus. Jesus who walked along the shores of Galilee. Jesus who was there to save those souls. Jesus who was there to cure the sick. That Jesus should be your hero. You know, he should be like your, he should be your end goal. He should be the reason why you are moving, you are breathing. And when he, it becomes that, what happens? Jesus fully works and he, he's ready to work in us. So faithfulness in the smallest of moments, God desires from us and zeal constantly. So this is one message that I've been really contemplating, meditating upon. And until we surrender ourselves, only until we surrender ourselves in the smallest of ways every day. Don't, don't be discouraged. Spiritual life is not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy because if it was easy, you know, you know, we know the harder something is the greater value that waits it at the end. For example, when we're in kindergarten, right? When we are in kindergarten, we're competing for a competition. We won't get a $500 check. No, no, no. We will get some crayons. But the, when we move up the scale, when we move up the scale, so when we go to plus two or like when we go to uh, 12th grade or when we go into college and we enter competitions, the competition is more fierce and thus the reward is greater. So meaning in, in life itself, the same way. So in life, we will get tried and pushed and struggled and stretched, 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 meaning like we may be like this, but God will pull us and 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 pull us. And, pull us. and we will completely stretch out. But that means the reward is greater. So our reward is heaven. And you know, that much our aim should be there. I should sit in the lap of Jesus. You know, sometimes they say, Isha, you know, Jesus, you're seeing this. You're seeing this, right? You, I, I tell you, Isha, like you're, you're seeing this, right? You're seeing this, right? And you know, my aim should not be to sit in the bag, not just to get somewhere and have a row. I want to be right there next to Jesus. I want to be right there next to Jesus. So every pain, every effort, it is all worth it. And just um, you know, encouraging you not to be discouraged in spiritual life. Rather, God is not looking at the big things, but the smallest things. Can we be faithful to that? And he sees that and he blesses us so much and he gives grace upon grace, right? From his fullness, right? John 1, 16, from his fullness, you have received grace upon grace. So let the, may the grace of Christ be in each one of you and bless each one of you to surrender your life. In every moment, there's a surrender. See, it may, it, there is something called a surrender in each moment. For example, you know, when I'm sitting at the table and I see some nice food I want to eat, right? And this happens all the time to me. I mean, you see something nice you want to eat. And, you know, your soul will tell you, your, your heart will tell you, you know, out of love for Christ, you put it away. And, and you know, and there are, there are two, two things, there are three things that can happen. One, you can completely, you know, conquer that and totally, you know, conquer the, conquer means that like you can totally overcome the emotion to eat it and not take it. And, you know, you can save souls, right? That's a super thing. And, or, you know, you, or there's a battle that's constantly happening. You know, Lord, I, I want it. I want it. I don't, I, you know, I want it. But you know, th how much you struggle with something, that much grace is waiting for you there. And um, 
you know, for us, it's maybe at times, you know, like, you know, God, God is training us always. God sees us where we are. And when we say no to that, he blesses us so much. There are so many times where I'm in wonder how God opens doors through our, through our small sacrifices. Meaning there is a sister there in Akta Party, right? She, she was struggling a lot in this area in her sense that she had to give up her desires. And every day it was a small thing that so she really liked to take certain foods. But for Jesus, she kept putting it off and off. But for her, it was very painful, very, very painful. But at the end of that fasting that she had taken, maybe for one month, just one month she had taken it. But at the end of that one month, a great, great door of ministry was waiting for her. At the end of that, she could start to, to do the counseling for priests which is not easy for anyone to do. Like you have to be that gifted, but see for her, she only did it for one month. And, but for her in her heart, it was so painful. So, you know, for others, they might think, how is that painful? It's just a sweet, but God sees us where we are. And from there, he's ready to reward us. So be faithful in each moment. And God sees us where we are and he is ready to bless us. So keep, and until we surrender in each moment, are we faithful in each moment? Each moment God wants from us. Don't let Satan even have one moment. Um, our Amma, Sister Amy, she asks us all the time, are you with Jesus or are you with Satan? Meaning, it's so easy when you say a prayer to go off in thought. Meaning that prayers, you are just, you have given it to the world. You have not given it to the heart of Jesus. See, when you say a prayer, are you able to pray it with your heart? And if, when you do, really you're able, because see, uh, it really is something for me that's a source of great strength is, you know, the word of God is definitely the word of God and Faustina's diary. She says one mercy chaplet. She just says one mercy chaplet and that soul that is dying, that's on the brink of death, gets to see heaven while she dies. And I used to wonder, why is that? I could never understand that until recently. That is because that one mercy chaplet that St. Faustina said, she said it with her whole heart. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are always doing mercy chaplets. We are always doing many rosaries. We are always reading the Bible. So let's, you know, not, you know, in this new year, let's take a time to just do it with our heart. See, in these days, you know, we are praying in these moments, we have gathered together in prayer. If we really put our heart into that prayer, our Lord will surely receive it. He will. So like Faustina Day, let us put that faith, that much faith in God, that as I'm saying this one mercy chaplet, I will save that soul. I will. So see how much higher of a vision, vision in life St. Faustina had. When she was saying her prayers, she didn't just say it for the sake of saying it. Rather, she said it for the Lord. She said it with her heart. So this time, you know, let us just close our eyes for one minute. And let us pray together to get this grace to be faithful in each moment. Oh, Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask this of you in your name. Lord, you, you are always close to your beloved ones because they were close to your heart. Help us to draw near to the heart of God, to be in constant faithfulness to you, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, claiming Psalm 16, verses 18, 18, verses 16. He reached down from on high and he took me. He drew me from mighty waters. O oh Lord, may your hand reach out upon us wherever we are in our spiritual life. Maybe we are drowning and we are unable to be faithful, but set us on the stable rock. Help us to be stable and help us to cling to you. And you are our good shepherd. You are always there to guide and lead us wherever we are. Help us to give ourselves to save your people, to save those souls who are dying, to give much value to those souls which no one cares about. Oh, Jesus. I want to save those souls. We want to save those souls. Oh, give me the grace by not doing, but it doesn't matter what I'm entrusted to do, but rather to do the things that I'm told to do in faithfulness and in love and complete fidelity to you. For this, we ask the help of Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.